Welcome to this special webinar presented by Danik Bhaskar Group in association with Exchange for Media. Over the next few weeks, we will be bringing you some curated series of webinars, and the topic would be non-metros driving the economic resurgence. The idea is to focus on the tier two and tier three clients, you know, and the uh, consumers in India who are now leading, who have now come to the center stage of consumption across India. Today's webinar, before I come to that topic, let me just give an overview as what's, what has been happening in the last uh, 100 plus days. Now we are in a recovery phase. There are green shoots of recovery everywhere. And that's largely driven by non-metro consumers. Very, very strangely, I mean, if you see, it was a different world order as far as consumption is concerned and which has totally shifted. COVID has perennially shifted the way we look at brands, the, the way we look at consumers. So we'll get into the depth of this conversation today. The topic for today is non-metros, the road to recovery for the Indian economy. And the focus of the webinar will be on how brands must strengthen the consumer connect in non-metros to accelerate recovery and growth. Before I go further, I want to introduce my esteemed panelists. I have with me Mr. Satish N.S., Senior Vice President, Higher Appliances India Private Limited. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thanks, Amit. Thank, uh, thank you. I have with me, sorry, one minute. Okay. I have with me Mr. Sudhakar Rao, Director of Branding, ICFI Group. Welcome, sir. Mr. Vipul Oberoi, CMO, IIFL Finance and IIFL Securities. Welcome, Mr. Oberoi. And Ms. Kakun Sethi, CMO, Danik Basker Group. Welcome all of you to this uh, special webinar wherein the focus is on the consumer sentiment in non-metro cities. Before I move further, uh, I want to just, just understand, I think we all have been in a different world order over the last 100 days. So a little bit of story uh, of how you have been personally dealing with a personal and a professional front as far as COVID is concerned and how are you balancing the two? Maybe a one minute answer from all of you. I can start, maybe uh, anyone can start. There's no order in that. Yes, Mr. Satish, maybe you can start. Okay. Uh, the last uh, probably 80 days or 100 days, uh, the question was, how will you differentiate between a personal life and a professional life? I think there's no uh, line. It's it's mixed now. Both personal and professional life, both are mixed. And probably uh, in a uh, webinar like this, in my general days, I would not have been, uh, you know, coming on a t-shirt like this. So that thin line, of <laughs> off, and, you know, the formal, this one, oh, I think. It's, there's a very little difference between a professional and a personal life now. So the lines are blurring. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Rao, your thoughts? Yeah, in the last 100 days, uh, I would divide that into two parts. So the first part of 50 days, uh, I was busy on the roads, uh, working along with my co-alumni to distribute ration for the needy folks, especially those uh, so-called migrant workers. And uh, we reached out to about 21,000 individuals and managed to put about uh, uh, 15 days of food on the table. Uh, so that's what we did uh, as a voluntary activity from all my friends who studied along with me. So that was the first 50 days. And the second 50 days, I was coming to office because uh, uh, we need to uh, work towards these green shoots. Therefore, we were coming to office and right. uh, interacting with all my uh, uh, colleagues and uh, trying to ensure that online education is, uh, uh, and is, is in place and right. uh, try and coordinate that it is uh, taken forward in the right spirit. So that's okay. roughly between professional and personal in the last 100 days. Mr. Oberoi. Yeah, so uh, in this lockdown, actually our lives have been, uh, uh, Sadish had blurred. But if I say there is a stark contrast also, if I look at my screen, laptop or mobile, there's still a flurry of emails work being done and he was working from home and possibly working much more than uh, before uh, but when i look outside go outside uh, leave my office uh, right. the world has changed drastically it's very different from what we are seeing on screens uh, because right. of lockdown we haven't still yet come back and i said out of mumbai 
so life hasn't yet come back to normal uh, there are still uh, empty roads which uh, in mumbai you would uh, prefer to have that but um, on the whole when you see businesses closed uh, from our side uh, all the marketing channels most of these are non existent right now so it's a big contrast which i experience ms city finally your thoughts yeah in fact uh, just as uh, you know a couple of us here mentioned uh, lines are blurred uh, as far as working is concerned i also sorry so we lost the connection i guess I think that that's okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's a bit. It, it's a thing. Right, right, right. I think that there's some oh, problem with the connection. Uh, yeah. Problem with my connection. It was slightly like we we okay. in between. Yes, uh, briefly. Yeah, it's been a little weird uh, since morning. Uh, so uh, my son is uh, currently appearing for his first online exam. So that's kind of new. Mm. Uh, it's, right, right. Uh, yeah, so it's a. Right. Um, I think it's just the level. It's the amount of work right. which is gone up, right. uh, and it's right. all you know interconnected nowadays. So it's absolutely. So I think what I the sense is that of course I think life has changed and changed for maybe the better. Of course, maybe maybe this becomes a long run, you know, format the way lives will be run here after. But one of the good things I just wanted to add is that you know during this hundred days or so. I, Uh, the level of interaction that me and my colleagues have had with our uh, you know clients and uh, advertisers right the at large has gone through the roof i've never interacted so much with people and i think that was the high that has been the high point of and the last right. years yeah absolutely i think people do actually uh, highlight this point that while we have been socially distanced but there has been a certain connect you know which was never before great so before uh, i mean we i want to move directly to my first question for the day which is uh, we we talked about we have seen how consumers are uh, you know the metros and the non metros markets are shaping up and we have come to find out and so have a lot of research that has been done over the last few weeks that non metros you know the consumers they have come out as stronger as resilient you know consumers so my first question is that what makes non metros so resilient to this uh, this drastic change that has happened you know this phenomenal uh, thing that has kind of vanished and uh, closed businesses across and brought down this consumer sentiment but yet non metros are not that affected so i want to come to you first mr obroy what is your thought what is the the reason that we see this pattern so thanks uh is i would like to actually first try to separate the wheat from the chaff uh, is that the economy slowed down really not because of covid but because of lockdown uh, so i'm not getting into the reasons True. why lockdown was done uh, it was of course essential and uh, maybe i'm putting it too simplistically but uh, because of lockdown people consumers weren't spending as much businesses saw slow down in production or requirement of staff for certain services or had to stop their business altogether which right. resulted in layoffs pay cuts and ultimately these were the consumers who were not spending as much it's a vicious circle mm -hmm. but it all started with lockdown now right. i'm bringing this point also is that uh, the major cities saw a stricter implementation of lockdown by authorities and more discipline following of rules as well by the citizens which hasn't been the case in non metros now businesses continue to operate in most places so there was a continuity in production and consumption of goods and services now metros are hub of services they have non farm up output rural areas are hubs of agriculture which obviously cannot be paused should not be paused non metros uh, if i see uh, the tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, are a mix of both but uh, in my opinion they just happen to be along the silk route but uh, continuity i feel is the major reason why non metros have been more buoyant and resilient right 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 uh mr santosh uh, i want to come to you i mean do you agree do you think uh, the the fact that lockdown was more visible in metros that led to the sentiment that we're witnessing today uh, that uh, resurgence in non metros is that the reason uh if you ask me see the the impact of the lockdown or this one in the non metros was quite low second is 
the uh, overall economy impact on metro it was least there and third is probably the customer there because of all this digital uh, awareness which is coming in they still continue to spend the money which uh, they were having you know and, and uh, that's probably the reason where the non metros have probably performing better than and the other factor is the dependency on the private sector or any of the other businesses in the non metros were quite low when we compared to a city like for example in city the number of private organizations which were impacted or this one were quite high whereas in in a up, up country market or a non metro it was more of a government services which were there the dependency on the private sector is quite low i think the government sector never impacted in terms of their salary or any of those things so that i think was one of the primary reason where the non metros are still continuing to perform better Siri, I want to come to you uh, since you understand the dynamics of, uh, I mean, the markets which are non-metro. Since you have a great presence across uh, India, I want to understand from you the sentiment, you know, the reason for this uh, resurgence, the buy-in sentiment that is in the non-metros. How do you treat it? Is the question to me or to Sudha? Yes, yes. To you, to you first. Me. Yes. All oh, right. Okay. Um, well i think uh, there is a, it's it, you know actually first i believe that uh, this paradigm shift kind of thing that uh, is being talked about is uh, now more pronounced it has always been there uh, the fact that uh, non metros are performing uh, better than metros apart from the unfortunate fact that there has been a lockdown and metros are impacted more and so on and so forth the uh, the, the uh, nuance of the um, you know of the uh, non metros is very different from uh, from the metros uh, their their fabric their social fabric the way they are constructed they're all flat they are not high rises uh, where you know if you have a covid situation in one high rise you get locked out or those kind of situations are not happening that's number one number two uh, wherever there are societies those are very small societies uh, we are seeing this because we are delivering uh, you know to these societies so we know what's happening on the ground and we've seen that seen that from very close quarters now uh the other thing is that uh, as a as markets or as people they are very social uh their uh, sociability is a very important part of the non metro life so that's why one of the things that we have seen is their ability to while uh, do safety to an extent right. uh, but right. continue to you know be sociable uh right. as far as um, uh, you know uh, while there was a, a lockdown uh, as you know panelists said that it wasn't as serious as it was uh, mm -hmm. but there was a lockdown for example mm -hmm. um, we in in terms of our business we saw that uh, a complete shutdown for you know of about round and yeah. almost became non shutdown so uh, that i feel that it's the uh, it, it's a cultural thing which is why the uh the fact that uh, they are less impacted that's number 1 and number 2 is the kind of for example you and i work in corporate offices so we are uh, shut down uh, these are um, more business uh, oriented business trade uh, these are also uh, you know uh, a government uh, a large proportion of the of the uh, population has their own uh, they have their own means of uh, earning so therefore uh, they are less they are able to decide whether they should work or not work rather than being uh, you know in a situation that we are in right right i think you brought in uh, brilliantly this cultural uh, perspective i think very validly i think we sometimes miss that in our conversations mr rao i want to come to you somebody who brings in both metro and non metro uh, perspectives you know again how do you read this uh, change of uh, consumer sentiment changing from the metro and being shifted to the non metro the drivers of growth being in non metros how do you read it was it expected or is it not that simple as we see it sorry your audio is muted here yeah. when this pandemic hit uh, as you know and agree that it doesn't come with any advance notice 
So uh, the question of expecting it this way is not uh, non-existent. Uh, but on the other hand, I think the one overriding factor has been this lockdown and its fears as portrayed in the mainstream media. And uh, Metro guys, Metro folks are supposed to be taking it uh, more seriously. And those names were actually being thrown up in media more often compared to non-metros. Uh, here again, some of the essential services in non-metros uh, were not affected. Their consumption patterns more or less remained the same, but the demand is low. Generally, the demand which is actually fueled by the metros and uh, that has affected definitely the non-metros as well. Now, low demand and uh, ancillary production and uh, the related services, everything is affected. I fundamentally want to differentiate between metros, non-metros, and within non-metros, uh, rural and non-rural. I think that's a very important uh, aspect. We'll come to that in the second round. I will speak about that uh, after some time. But primarily today, if you touched about my own organization, ICFAI is into higher education, as you know. We have about uh, 11 ICFI universities across the country. And uh, they're, they're present in metros and non-metros as well. For example, we are present in uh, Hyderabad, Jaipur, Himachal Pradesh, uh, Dehradun, Ranchi, Raipur, and then we are in uh, Sikkim, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura. So, so the spread is of these universities is more in non-metros, whereas our business schools, which are nine in number, they are in bigger cities. So, the definition of metros we will we'll try to uh, close in now, saying ICFI business schools are in uh, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Mumbai, Pune, Ahmedabad, Kolkata, uh, Gurgaon, uh, Jaipur. So th these are the nine cities where we are present. So business schools are in bigger cities, universities are in, uh, which are non-metros. Right from the beginning, our focus has been to take quality education to the doorstep of larger pockets of uh, this country. So by structure and by intent, we have been present like that. And this lockdown or this uh, COVID uh, will not affect too much as far as uh, our education business is concerned. Uh, this is an annual purchase for them, unlike those essentials which they purchase every week and every month. This is an annual purchase and this is the first sector to recover, although this is the last one to open. Whenever the campuses are permitted to open, it will open. But one important overriding factor in education would be the mobility of students from one city to another city will not happen this year, particularly at least. For example, the student who is studying in, say, Jaipur would not like to move to Hyderabad and somebody in Gwalior would not like to move to, say, Mumbai. So the students will have to be caught, which means the catchment area will have to be in those respective towns itself. And ICFA is present in all these towns by structure right from the beginning, say last 12 years, we've been present in almost all these locations. Therefore, our catchment areas are more defined and we would like to expect those students studying there itself. In fact, our numbers could be, our enrollment numbers could be much more than the last year, given the fact that a large number of them will not migrate to nearby bigger cities uh, because we are the best option in all these places wherever we are present. I think you brought out some positive stories, which I think uh, have not been touched upon maybe in a lot of conversations earlier. But yes, very well said. Uh, I want to come to you, Mr. Satish. Uh, so there are, uh, the lines are redrawn, you know, the consumer, the way we look at consumers is totally, you know, redrawn. The behavior has shifted and it might be a permanent shift altogether. Do you think uh, the way we are looking at customers, you know, and overall, and right now this question is like the overall sentiment of customers. Do you think it, there's a permanent behavioral shift that is here to stay or is it a pattern that will alter maybe in the course of time as we go along? How do you see the shift in behavior? See, in the behavior, when, when, when we see, I can probably classify this behavior into probably two, three areas. The first one is probably some changes which will happen permanently, okay? Like, for example, uh, uh, the habits which are changing is like, we could never imagine a, uh, schools being online, you know? That's definitely, I mean, those are the habits which will change. 
somebody uh, doing household chores, you know, those things not allowing a servant to come in. Okay, I think these are the habits which will change drastically. And there are certain fundamental changes which are accel getting accelerated. For example, the search for information. Earlier, people used to go around in the shopping areas and then search for that information. Today, probably the digitization is the thing which is happening. Right. So people would do more of a digital search to get that information. Right. And, and, and probably the shopping, probably the online is, is here to stay, at least for the smaller items and the smaller ticket size. That adaptation which was there, like if you remember the uh, demonetization period, when people who could not even spell probably the Paytm were started, were forced. The I think probably the COVID has brought in that digital revolution and then probably that has uh, changed. Huh. There are certain habits which are forced, like for example, probably in this last 100 days, people have washed their hands more than probably their <laughs> lifetime. You know, This probably once the COVID fear goes out, probably these things, okay, anyway. And then probably social distancing today, okay, you're forced to live at home. So these are all temporary habits, which probably once the COVID uh, goes off, then people again will go back to shopping mall, people will go back to their friends and then, you know, have a party on this one. So I think these are the consumer behavioral changes which I see happening. Right, right. I know, I think once these behaviors are formed to undo them is another task altogether. I think you're so right. Uh, Mr. Obra, your thoughts on this change consumer that we call, you know, that normally in our conversations we say consumer has changed. Has he changed forever, he or she, or is it reversible, can be undone later on? Uh, in fact, Sadish uh, rightly has pointed out to two things. One is temporary habits and, and second is permanent. Uh, and yes, uh, demonetization, if you see, was also a watershed moment because it gave a huge fill up to the digital payments in India. So, but right now, when we talk about lockdown, uh, I think a lot has been said about the acceleration of digital consumption. But uh, I would like to talk more about uh, the digital conversation. And that is a consumer behavior change, which I would like to talk about. Uh, because of social distancing, uh, mainly for the past uh, four months or so, people are getting more used to, may not be happy, but they're getting more used to face to face, but non-personal meetings. And webinars is one example of that, yes. So, you can just Google the term meetings and you'll understand what I'm trying to say, the, the results that pop up. But uh, yes, demonetization made businesses think, do we need customer to pay cash? Now lockdown has made businesses and even consumers think, do we need personal interaction? While our brick and mortar businesses, our branches will not go anywhere, walk-ins will reduce because people will prefer interacting online first. And when I say online, let me clarify, is uh, online for me is any non-personal chat. So it can be web, email, chat app, or even a phone call. But what we will see is that uh, uh, like work from home is becoming the norm and people have got used to it. And many people do feel that going back to office and working regularly, uh, coming every day to office will become a bit difficult. Uh, it may so happen for a large set of consumers, even in non-metros. So purchase and interactions from home will also become the norm. Uh, only a word of caution, this does not apply to rural areas. I'm talking about non-metros. Right, right. Mr. Rao, uh, from your uh, perspective, the category you are in, uh, uh, you briefly touched upon how students who, have, who are back in their homes right now would not like to come back. You briefly touched upon it. But how do you read this uh, shift in you know, sentiment? in your category especially? Uh, in, in education, what happened uh, even earlier, before uh, COVID, was that uh, they, for closures, they used to visit the campus and talk to some faculty members, look at the labs, playgrounds and things like that, and then they would close. But a large part of their decision or the behavior of decision making was almost taken or made much before visiting the campuses based on the online stories that were available, which we were carefully managing to uh, have. For example, students are encouraged to share their views about the campus. They are free to talk about their own experiences, which will be a, a lesson for the, the prospective students to look at. And therefore, that way, they have always been in, in, in touch. For example, the student who is living in some parts of West Bengal knows exactly 
which program in ICFA University Dehradun is doing well. I will advertise all the programs are doing extremely well. But the student knows the same set of students who come to Dehradun will come for, for a particular program and not for another program. Right. All this was always possible because of the conversations that they were having in various uh, discussion groups on social media and you cannot hide those facts. So essentially what it means for me is that uh, uh, it has not changed much. And those of you, those, those, those students who will come and check the university can see the infrastructure now virtually. All the virtual reality films are available, augmented reality pictures are available. All those things will help them take a decision. But largely the decision would have been made already by the sum and substance of the experience shared by the previous right. students. And there's a market, uh, there's a word of mouth in the market that's existing largely. And it would be guiding and governing their decision making process. Great. Miss Aiti, you know, somewhere I think uh, all the, the marketing leaders, like all of you out there, you know, I think COVID is also a certain kind of a lab experiment to understand consumers and maybe understand the nuances of how they would behave in the longer run, you know, as we saw that uh, webinars and going online has become a norm. A norm. What has been your reading of uh, the change customer, one from your industry perspective and overall as a uh, marketing leader, you know, thought leader, what do you say, how does, has it shaped up, you know, in the last uh, few months? Sure. You know, and one of the things that I'd like to refer to is something I got hold of uh, very recently, which is, uh, uh, gave me a lot of information. Of course, there is the fact firsthand. Uh, sorry. you all non-metro for us. Um, uh, it's briefly disconnecting, but... Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Sorry, a, there is a bit of a disturbance. Uh, so, uh, okay? Yes, that's fine. fine. All right. Uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, you know, talk to you about uh, the recent uh, Ernst & Young report, which uh, came out, uh, I think, a few, uh, a week or 10 days back or something. Right. Which basically, and I, I, I read that report, and it was very interesting because... What it said was that um, uh, I actually wanted to spend a couple of minutes on that. One mm -hmm. is that uh, so you talked about, you know, how non-metros were uh, resilient and they had, and we discussed how, why and why they were right. better than metros and why, uh, you know, this trend could be there to stay and so on and so forth. Uh, some of the data that is supporting this discussion is that across, I think they've looked at some, you know, almost 15, 16 categories. And across categories, it seems to be so that, let us say, uh, buy mobiles or buy or mm -hmm. yeah. to be a, a more in the non metros and as, uh, that seemed to be like a, a real eye opener uh, for me at least where uh, it's important to see that report uh, that uh, across uh, um, you know categories there was a, a there seems to be a larger intention to buy which is why this whole feeling of or this whole belief that it is that these markets are more resilient than uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. or um, than metros at this point in time. Uh, they will continue to be more resilient for some of the reasons that all of us gave here. The fact that, you know, they are, uh, uh, they are probably, uh, the fact that I, I said that, you know, socially they're different or the fact that they were not as impacted, that their occupations are different, that they are uh, more business oriented. So they are running their own, of course, demand, I mean, to say that demand is not down would be like, uh, you know, that, that would be a really stupid statement. But of course, demand is uh, a down. But the fact is that resilience seems to be, that report said to me that, you know, that resilience is what these markets were showing. So that seemed to be a, a, a point that I thought I'd bring up right, in right. Uh, in view of, you know, or right. in favor of uh, uh, non metro uh, so to speak. I also wanted to touch upon one of the things that Satish mentioned. And I, again, this is first-hand experience because we are talking to our 
customers, our readers, our, uh, you know, uh, uh, our franchise who are on our digital avatars and, and our, on our radio stations. Uh, so we actually talk to them practically every day through a large speaking mechanism. Uh, and one uh, uh, a recent dipstick that we did, which was particularly in the category of uh, how people are behaving when they are going to shop. shop. So here, uh, as Satish said, that they are doing a lot of uh, uh, understanding, uh, research. In fact, what I saw in the EY report was that they are actually metros are uh, you know more. Uh, see, I mean, they have adopted uh, uh, digitization and uh, you know all kinds of uh, work that they are doing through that. But non metros are lagging behind, and some of the things that the uh, non metro uh, people have respondents have said that there is you know they are uh, probably uh, there is less uh, con the connectivity is lower uh, all of the languages that uh, they want is not available uh, sometimes they are they are a little scared of frauds and e payments and so on and so forth so some of those factors have been mentioned but uh, pertaining to this dipstick that i'm talking about which we did in a larger large size across several markets where we found that People who were going to uh, going shopping, particularly for white goods, they were going with a clear, uh, you know, picture in their mind that this was the brand that I am going to buy. This is the price of the brand, and I will go and pick that up. I'm not going to go to because it is COVID. They are not to the shop that they trust the most. They're going mm -hmm. there, they're picking it up, and they're coming back home. So they're shopping. They're actually physically. is probably from uh, various mediums right. from what we were expecting I think all of us are making our Amazon sale uh, uh, you know lists that we want to uh, currently and we probably uh, indulge in that <clears throat> but it, there the people are actually going out to shop right Absolutely, I think brilliantly put. Uh, even I read that report, and uh, these are. And as you mentioned, I think uh, sentiment is important. The sentiment of uh, resilience is important. The I think the uh, the markets uh, will come back, bounce back once the sentiment is there. I want to come to you, Mr. Rao, with my next question. I want to begin with you. That uh, now we talk about uh, the resurgence, the coming back, the green shoots. But the larger uh, question is that are there any specific categories that will be the drivers of this green shoots that are emerging uh, initially that would take off, you know, uh, help the market sentiment go up? Are there any categories specifically that would be driving it in your view? Is this to me? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, see, I, uh, my, my response will be in two areas. Uh, what is uh, related to education and the other one in general. The first one yes. about education is that uh, the online education that is currently going on uh, in our attempt to connect to a large number of students across the country, education institutions have not reached beyond 50% of the population, which means there are 37 crore students studying from KG to PG and research level across the country all the time 37 crore students are studying. Out of this, at best, institutions have reached out uh, to them online 50%. So a large population, another 50% is yet to be touched for more importantly, four reasons. One, lack of devices, either smartphones or tabs. Second, internet connectivity. Third one is the bandwidth. Even if you have internet connectivity, that does not ensure bandwidth. And the fourth one is electricity. Now, all these four factors are not uniformly present in the remaining 50% of the population locations. But in different, different pockets, some of the factors are dominant, but then it's an interplay of all the four. So it's not working uh, the way we want it. Now, this will only be, only be possible if the government is on mission mode. I said this earlier and I'm saying it again, that if the government is on mission mode and rap, rapid build infrastructure, probably we could reach, say, 70% or 75% from where we are at, at present 50%. Having said that, I come to the general uh, discussion of uh, the ENY report. I'm not a great uh, 
fan of ENY report. Uh, I read this. It's a July 2020 report. It's the latest one. Uh, for a very important reason that uh, I want to live like an optimist and die like a pessimist and not the reverse. See, currently what's happening is the rural sector or the non-metro is just not the rural. Non-metro is, is basically tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 and some of the tier 3 and tier 4 is also rural. So therefore, let me talk about uh, rural itself. You know, rural economy has got agriculture economy and non-agriculture economy. You know that agriculture economy is about, you know, uh, you, you have farming and then non-farming is about construction, uh, live uh, stock rearing and so on and so forth. So all this put together is the rural economy. I don't see that there are any credible reasons why the rural economy is going to help fuel the overall Indian economy. I, I, I don't see that actually. Even otherwise, also, the rural economy was only about one-seventh of our economy or one-eighth of our economy. Therefore, I don't see structurally why that should be uh, helping the overall economy in, in coming back to normalcy. You will have these islands of boost on a comparative mode saying that non-metro is doing well. I agree to that, extent, uh, to that extent. But is it going to be permanently like that? I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is not. COVID is reaching non-metros and even rural areas now. So the hitherto uh, uh, factors that, that probably gave a semblance of resilience are now not going to exist. Therefore, we need to have those uh, uh, things once again checked. ENY should present another report by, by, uh, by end of August or middle of August. That would be the realistic picture. As we move forward, the number of COVID cases are going to rise. The state governments are going to lose their control. Their medical facilities and infrastructure has already busted and it is going to go worse. The state revenue collections are coming down uh, more because of you know, no access and no uh, activities happening in various parts of the state. Their collections have come down drastically. So their own ability to service everyone will be very, very poor, especially at a time when their priority is COVID. Right, right, right. So, so these are these are large number of issues which which are there. Perfect. I think it is misunderstood. I am I am comparing this year to report to what Vivek Kaul has been writing about in various pieces uh, and where he has been talking about. Vivek Kaul, a good friend, he wrote that uh, bad money. He says that people have actually not understood the rural economy or the agriculture economy. It is actually very very small, and and some of the instances taken by, for example the tractor sales and uh, motorbike sales have gone up. So right. motorbike sales and tractor sales are very, very small part of the whole thing in rural areas. For example, last fiscal 2019 and 20, the tractor sales, each tractor on average cost about 5 lakhs of rupees. So if 7 lakh, 7 lakh, lakh tractors have been sold, then it was only 35,000 crores. Right. Whereas uh, it, it, is, it, it again works out to uh, about one eighth of the whole thing. So, so no, I, we can't go by those factors. No, we need I, I, I totally, totally agree with you. I think you have brought in a sentiment which is there. I think there is a scope of, of course, I think how the COVID scenario will shape up, you know, and henceforth. I think that is another conversation. I do totally agree with you, your point of view. Uh, but at the moment, I mean, what is before us, you know, what is before us? I want to come to you, Mr. O'Broy, you know. If we look at the picture that is right now before us, and what the picture is coming is, of course, you know something that we can look at later on. Uh, basis the data that we have so far, uh, in your view, what would be the categories that would be driving that growth, the sentiment, of, the market sentiment back, in in your view? Uh, of course, I have a contradiction, and I believe that agriculture is uh, first critical to the economy. Uh, how much contribution it makes, of course, it's not the only, uh, it's not a major contributor, yes, uh, from a numbers perspective, but of course, it has an overall uh, cascading effect on the other aspects of the economy, including uh, what Satish would also talk probably about the white goods sales. Say. So, uh, the cascading effect is also important, and uh, when we started this webinar, I spoke about the vicious circle, which has to be really broken. Uh, second, I feel, uh, is uh, the MSMEs. Uh, because they generate employment 
and uh, the more we support the msmes uh, and it all depends on the government support right now so uh, they would not really bounce back organically like a phoenix uh, support has to be provided third i believe is uh, telecommunications uh, and i feel that telecommunication essentially was always communications and i'm not talking about just phone calls happening data right. is critical which uh, mr sudhakar also mentioned for his students who and because schools and campuses will be the last ones to get open uh in fact uh, uh, communications is important for uh, everybody's business including mine so uh, low cost of data is critical because in our business which is a more branch driven business and nbfc business uh, we have seen a drastic surge in the adoption of digital payments uh, and that we have seen in the past one year or so and that is possible only if we have uh, good reliable data uh, data connectivity so telecommunications is critical whether they can bounce back or not it's uh, entirely up to the government right now right. miss city i want to come to you my next question is to you since you the interface that you have with brands is different i mean you have, there's a cross section of brands that you interact with and um, what has been your understanding of the categories that are ready to uh, can you hear me sorry um, am i audible Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. It's breaking in. Yeah. Okay. But it's okay. All right. Tell All me. Right. So I want to understand from you the categories according to you that would be driving this growth since you have, as I said, you know, interacted with the whole lot of the brands across. Can you hear me? Uh, we can. It's, it's slightly. I mean, in between, it gets uh, disconnected yeah, for a second. Yeah, but yeah, for a second it yeah. drops, and I'm like a little confused then. Right. Well, um, I can only go by data. uh what the data tells me is that there seems to be a uh, you know good amount of volume in a uh, uh, a certain number of categories um auto for one uh, is uh, you know is one of those categories there is education uh, which is the other uh, category which is uh, there is a good amount of volume in the uh, in the non metro markets that that we can see here mm-hmm. uh there is fmcg um, uh, there are and, and one of the things that we've seen you know it's an interesting uh, uh, it's an interesting situation that local fmcg brands have given proper fmcg brands have run for their money also because they have seized the moment. for example amul uh, if you see the story there amul seized the moment and continued to advertise at a point in time when everybody was quiet and wondering what to do uh and uh it was uh, it reaped the benefits of that uh, uh you know of that quick thinking and taking advantage of uh the fact that everybody else was quiet and then and they wanted to make their brand more salient so there are uh, uh there are several large categories which are extremely promising uh, one of the uh, we are also seeing uh, some amount of movement in the non metro markets from uh, uh from uh, uh, you know fmcds uh, uh, which is in sufficient categories uh, so uh, these are some of the larger uh, larger categories that we uh, see volume in uh, importantly if i were to talk about my business uh, in the sense that uh, you know the business that we are in uh, in terms of media uh, a couple of things have happened unlike which is really a different uh, you know this whole metro versus non metro uh, situation that we are seeing uh, we are discussing actually uh, in the metros we've seen that over the last just about a week 10 days back i started receiving my newspaper but if you look at uh, uh, non metro markets and i'm talking all regional markets here not dining buster alone this is all regional markets all whether kerala to gujarat and so on and so forth uh yeah. all regional uh, publications were uh, uh, went back into recovery mode of this because for 7 days everything got shut down so after 7 days the recovery was extremely uh, uh, rapid to the ex- the recovery of a newspaper is close to newspapers is close to 90% in our markets it's about 82% we are a public limited company we have to file our uh, you know price for house is our uh, uh, it, it audits us we have to file uh, our returns on sebi our quarter is coming up uh, next next week so we will be filing i know for a fact that we are uh, at 82% recovery of uh, 
of circulation. So the because the state government's help, the sanitization and everything that needed to be done was done really rapidly. I would give a lot of credit to publishers here because I think they understood that they cannot live without, I mean, they should not uh, allow this habit to be broken. Right, right. And uh, th that quick thinking uh, allowed uh, the recovery of circulations to happen very fast. We also, for example, in our case, if I look at it, we're delivering about 75 million MUV on. You know, the fact is that, uh, and we've seen a clear pattern when we look at our portfolio. We see the morning newspaper being read. Uh, we know that, again, uh, I'm going back to a, a report which. Uh, which has been discussed before, which said that, you know, the trust index as far as uh, newspapers yes. is concerned is very high. Uh, I uh, don't for a minute uh, doubt that because uh, we've seen that in our markets. We're also talking to other publishers and we feel that the written word, particularly in these markets, uh, the written right. word is taken very seriously. And more importantly, the other number that really, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, surprised me was that Online, people tended to believe online news more than they believe TV news. I would assume, no, that's, uh, there's a reason for that. Because in the non-metros, uh, they physical papers. That's mm -hmm. why the trust index is quite high as far as uh, online is concerned. So uh, these are right. some of the, uh, you know, uh, categories which are, uh, uh, which are moving in the, uh, like I said, if I compare July uh, last year versus this year, I'm sure that, you know, we, we are far away from uh, what numbers, but there are uh, volumes which are uh, speaking of a good, uh, I wouldn't say great, but uh, definitely a, a recovery, which is, uh, which is being seen. Right. There is right. promise there. So, uh, can't sure. away from that situation. Perfect. Mr. Satish, um you have heard all of them and now I want to get your perspective on this, uh, the drivers of uh, this, the green shoes, the resurgence and, and in your category also. Uh, give me a perspective, a sense of how your category is placed in this uh, revival that we call it the green shoes. Where do you see the role of your category plus the overall, the drivers that would be there as far as other brands are concerned? Uh. Luckily for us, I think probably after the grocery industry, we were the fastest to recover. Okay, uh, because the average spend time spent by a uh, individual at home has gone up. Okay, so uh, the what will drive this category, or what are the things which will drive the categories which will add the hygiene part, the categories which will address the convenience part. I think probably those categories would grow much, much faster. L giving our own examples, probably these, the larger refrigerators, which is costing about 65, 70,000. Trust me, we ran out of inventory last month. Okay, the people are storing more and people are looking at larger refrigerators. Same is the case probably earlier. Now, most of the people are spending a time at home and uh, they have their, most of the men, getting into washing. So earlier the maid was doing, so semi-automatic machine was there. Now they are upgrading to a fully automatic machine. Earlier the maid was doing the cleaning. Now the dishwashers people want to buy and people want to buy all these UV product. And the best part is since the time spent is more, the living room has become the new entertainment center. So we are seeing a huge surge in our large screen televisions which are happening. So it's a huge, I mean, across the category, whether it is metro or non-metro, the large screen televisions have gone up. So overall, if you look at the categories, whether in our industry or any other industry, the categories which will address anything related to hygiene, anything related to convenience, I think probably those are the industries which would definitely grow much, much, much faster than what current uh, uh, space right. is. Right. I want to make a small announcement that we have another 10, 15 minutes left and we are already getting some questions and I want to request uh, uh, my viewers that, you know, you have any questions, please uh, post on Facebook, Twitter, on Zoom and we will definitely ask those questions. I want to come to you, Mr. Satish, with my next uh, question. I want to start with you is that in all of uh, the categories, 
there is a missing uh, these are the physical touch points have come down and uh, completely not been seen there for some time and uh, the touch points have shifted to digital and one is that can we recreate the physical uh, the experience uh, uh, digitally and how how are our brands thinking strategically in a long term way to adjust to this uh, digital touch points that 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 are emerging right now ask me that question yes yes you can this is my answer to you my beard is what i can say the last 100 days has been a nightmare to us trust me ours is a industry where people would want to touch and feel a refrigerator see the color of the refrigerator would like to see a washing machine how does it look what does it function would like to touch and feel a microwave okay when you are opening a door and see how it would work now here is a challenge for us in the last 100 days the first and foremost the pre purchase completely changed the customer the way he was going to a, a shop floor earlier they used to go to the shop floors talk to the sales person understand from him what and what does he want and this one come back home discuss with their friends and colleagues and then they were buying it now that completely stopped second during the purchase now people earlier would prefer to go to a larger outlet or 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 you know some store which is in a mall or something people started buying locally we suddenly saw a resurgence in the smaller outlets in the distribution channel people said boss if, even if it was 500 rupees expensive let me go buy from my neighborhood store why take a risk of getting into something one is okay lockdown second is so, so we saw a resurgence so the purchase pattern changed the third important challenge was the post purchase earlier if you buy a refrigerator or if you buy a uh, led television our engineer used to come to your houses customer houses set it up to his requirement and then come out of it now the all the three parameters completely changed pre purchase okay we have to make everything digital from a people who are see our industry is almost i would say varying from brand to brand probably 93 between 90 to 93% is from offline and about 10 to 7% is from online businesses now this 93% people we were depending completely on physical everything physical physical catalog physical product demonstration now in yeah. quick succession of 30 days you have to shift from physical to uh, digital so you have to make everything so uh, clean your websites get your uh, blogs cleared get the videos done everything how effectively you will put your product videos and everything to them second we have to get our distribution channel right okay if the customer is going to neighborhood store are we present there how do you change that thing then in terms of advertisement if we have to advertise very good there was no live activity happening none of this op operas were working all the they were only broadcasting the repeat channels there's no outdoor there's no print especially in the metros you don't have a print to do it so what is the only means get into digital in digital okay there's a whole list would you get into facebook okay if you have to get into facebook will you use a static will you use a video there's a huge change which we have to do in terms of our entire marketing approach had to change now the post purchase it's a nightmare means as a consumer i bought a product which is about 50000 and it has come to my house delivery i need to start it right now so how do you without a engineering being there, engineer being there now mm-hmm. even if you upload a uh, unboxing videos the the problem per each customer will have a different perception do i switch on this refrigerator right now or what do i store then finally we had to reinvent the wheel wherein we made people to call on video our service engineers would take the call on video okay madam or sir please show me where is the problem okay this is okay this is how you switch on this is how you uh, set up the refrigerator this is a temperature okay there is a knob there in the right corner okay do that one so you know right. those are the complete adaptation if you ask me what we were in march if we, somebody had told that okay satish there would be a day coming in wherein you have to demonstrate how the unboxing has to be done on video probably in march none of us would have believed it but here is the time now most of our demonstration especially the large uh, the high ticket sizes we do a demonstration on video so customers don't want them to so it's a completely different change which happened uh, in terms of uh, adaptation right. completely right. and that also explains the story behind yeah. the beard i can now understand yes. thank you yes <laughs> perfect uh, mr rao yes i mean so brilliantly i think uh, said uh, mr rao your take on this uh, 
digital, um, the missing physical touch points and completely digital. Tell me the story in your category. Uh, in education, what is happening is uh, the enrollment process has become online. It has been automated. The industry has been moving in this direction uh, over the last three to four years. Uh, but COVID and the pandemic and lockdowns have uh, uh, compelled us to adapt to a situation which anyways we would have adapted after say four years or so. So the industry on the whole have taken online very seriously because that is the only way to connect to the prospective students and the other stakeholders. The admission process is online. The counseling is online. The visits are being uh, worked out online. The selection process has become online. I would like to tell you that uh, a large part of our selections in our undergrad programs is already done and uh, we have been able to identify the students through online interviews and uh, selected the students and given the uh, admission letters as well. I'm sure many other institutions are also doing the same. So yes, the touch points have become very different, but slowly and steadily the industry was moving towards uh, chat conversations, mentoring, handholding, and uh, the experience of online admission fairs has, has been prevalent for some time, but it's just catapulted into a, a all pervasive feature in the last three to four months. I think it is working, but uh, in, this, in the second round of the question, I would like to answer what is going to happen in the future and how it's going to evolve. But as of now, yes, touch points have changed and the industry has adapted beautifully. Right. Mr. Obroy, uh, how are you navigating the shift? How are you coming to terms with this new world, I mean, marketing world order, I may call it? So, uh, in fact, uh, talking about uh, our line of business, which is, uh, uh, I manage marketing for both an NDFC and securities business. That's a broken business. Uh, and broken business has seen uh, uh, volumes which have never been seen before. So, we have seen a huge uh, multi-X jump in transactions. But when it comes to NVFC business and our primary businesses are gold loan, uh, home loan, business loan, and you can imagine what the situation would be. For example, gold loan people take it for, uh, say, their occupational requirements or for spending on some luxuries of the family uh, or for emergencies. And if you see that apart from emergencies, uh, people are not really spending, they are postponing their purchases. So it was always uh, a difficult time for us. Uh, but uh, thankfully, at IFL, we were ahead of the curve. As far as investment in digital was concerned, uh, but uh, I can say for, uh, with facts that uh, our loan payments through our mobile app, through our web portal has increased drastically. And we recently launched a digital gold loan for top-ups, which has become amazingly popular. So people are uh, adopting these digital uh, platforms. It's only that the brands have to be ready. Uh, we have seen, in fact, uh, we will do a lot of uh, hyper-local targeting on digital platforms. And uh, we have, uh, in fact, got uh, more leads through hyperlocal searches in these four months than we got in the previous six months before the lockdown. Now, it's all a, it's a testament to the kind of uh, digital adoption which even non-metros have been doing. Right. So it's not been tough for us from a marketing perspective uh, because uh, it's something which was always uh, on the anvil and one needs right. to be prepared. Right. Miss Eri, uh... So, so this category, I mean, um, from your perspective, you know, I think people miss the newspaper in their hands and, you know, till they got it, I oh, think I there's did. a certain, so, uh, so, so that's a different story uh, from, from your perspective and tell me what is that story? How are people navigating this space? While we see digital is there, but even that report, which I also read that, you know, the credibility factor, unless you have that touch and feel of the paper, you really can't trust. No, I, I don't think it's just a touch and feel situation. I think it's a question of, you know, the uh, pull of the brand, the brand that you've grown up with. And mm, really, exactly. Uh, in, uh, I mean, aunts ask this entire, uh, if they would act, ever be in a situation when they don't have their brand available uh, to their customer for a long period of time, I don't think anybody can actually afford to be in that situation ever. Uh, right particularly where you know habits are concerned and so on and so forth uh, so uh, in a I think newspaper reading is a, uh, and the trust in newspapers the credibility so that's uh, not uh, surprising at all 
there has been uh, there are several uh, data points which tell us uh, in fact the even bcg has been doing a monitor which is on you know uh, uh, smaller towns versus larger towns kind of uh, smaller towns larger towns rural i think that which also tells the same thing that you know essentials like newspapers are very high in uh, in the uh, smaller towns which in this case means a non metro so i would assume uh, so there are uh, so that's uh, nothing new to the trust high trust index is not something new to talk about it has taken right. i think publishers take the uh, changing uh, uh, you know the what we say the kendra mein pathak a uh, concept which is basically that your reader is at the core of whatever you do and understanding how the reader is changing and what are their uh, requirements i mean today uh, we are not in the business of breaking news right but so right. we have morphed into uh, into a uh, into an information hub a knowledge hub so to speak so that has carried a uh, regional a uh, print into places into larger number of homes across uh, you know uh, across the years uh, uh, so right. that's not something that is uh, surprising to me what is in right. fact i wanted to pose a different question to the panel here and you know such sure. uh, marketing leaders here uh, one of the things that i wanted to ask is that if we were to you know look at what the subject matter here today is which is that it's um, are on metros uh, you know really fueling the recovery of uh, in india and there seems to be some data available uh, now to say that yeah there are certain uh, categories where they are looking more resilient and so on and so forth in this situation how does the market prioritization model change yes, so that's please, a, uh, that's a a, yeah yeah so how anyone wants to market, take it yes. the market prioritization model change because one point that this whole you know traditional uh, uh traditional uh market prioritization where you know uh, the lot p1 markets are metros but now metros are not firing uh they will uh, come back and they will but at the at this point in time you and i are not going to sit there and say we wait for the metros to fire right we will say that these are the markets that are firing uh go get in there so what happens to market prioritization i just wanted to get a word from all of you correct okay see yes. in terms of market prioritization as you rightly said okay as a as a sales or a marketing guy you can't wait for market to wake up you know okay you need to take that optimistic view and say okay where is the market working these are the markets which are working okay what does it take to take that market up okay okay for example in the up country market or the rural market so we have been pushing our entire distribution channel uh, the towns which are open so at any point of time at at probably around 9 o'clock we get a clear information which are the markets open which are the shops open so entire our sales team we have a mapping exercise which we do so we understand which are the markets which are open what is going to be closed now what is it working there is the print reaching there okay now of course in terms of how do you get the customer so print is which of our markets prints are reaching probably okay take that as a priority and then put the print there okay if the, that market can be doing we have experimented for example we did some experimentation in the up country market to see the tier 2 and tier 3 like how a digital a facebook or a, a, a campaign can work so that we clearly we experimented on a particular product in that market to see whether facebook will work okay that way okay some markets we did like for example now the onams is starting so okay in kerala touch would okay probably the uh, news print has not <clears throat> got affected so probably to that extent that they have already reached like you said about 80 85% they have reached okay move ahead there because in tv there's nothing live happening so move into print and then try different combinations yes of course don't wait for metro to come up whatever so money basically what you're saying satish is go where the sales is right yes obviously yes. right so if the sales is in the in tier 2 yes. tier 3 markets then go there i guess so that's what you're saying at the end right? of the day at the month end we need to look at the number so the number wherever it happens chase that number there that's it i mean that's what probably we have been prioritizing and moving ahead right 
Right, right. Meet a consumer wherever he is. Definitely. Yeah. So I want to I want to come quickly to these. I have some questions so specific. Uh, I quickly want to refer to these uh, questions. My first is to you, Mr. Satish. Uh, this question is from Rekha More. Uh, as you said before, that your industry is back on track. Same happened with regional dailies and non-metro markets. Uh, how are you guys making the most of it? See, definitely. That's why if you see uh, during the lockdown. Probably, uh, okay, I mean, without referring to the names, probably mm -hmm. in the metro market, we stopped advertising. But in the non-metros, we continued our advertisement in terms of the train. Like I just gave an example of Onam. So we have full fledged. Even today, we have a full page ad which has come in Matrubhubi, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. wherever we are seeing an opportunity, whether it is a regional or this one, we've been quite aggressive in that markets to move ahead. So... Mm -hmm. I think right. that answers. Sure. Uh, Mr. Rao, for you, the question is, uh, where uh, do you see the education category in the next one year? What are your plans to deal with uh, this situation? Yeah, I have seen that question. Uh, we need to uh, understand two important scenarios that are emerging uh, owing to the uh, pandemic as far as education is concerned. We see that initially there was a lot of confusion as to what has to be done and then quickly institutions have woken up to building their infrastructure and uh, uh, training their faculty members to get on to online connect. So confusion to infrastructure building to the maturity stage of where institutions would win is to create differentiation. The institution was already known for certain USPs. I think that right. USP should be brought into even in the online world. I think once the differentiation is achieved, then that would be a maturity stage. Now, right. within this online adoption, there are again three important phases. One is the first phase has been adopting various tools like Zoom, WhatsApp, uh, Google uh, Meet, or uh, MS uh, Teams, so on and so forth. From right. tools, some institutions have moved to what is called the white label learning management systems, white label LMS. White label LMS is little more than a tool. It gives you certain other functionalities, but that is available in the market and you can put your logo on that and you can run. But, but institutions which are here for a longer stay and who have a job to protect their reputation will build their own learning management systems. It is like staying in a hotel to staying in a rented house, to staying in your own home. That is from right. tool to uh, white label LMS to your own LMS. It depends on your vision and the power of stay in the industry, the education space that you have been into. And that defines various other actions. So these are the two important scenarios that are okay. emerging. As I foresee, as I foresee, this is going to be a blended learning in the days to come, even after face-to-face -face learning is opened up. So a large part of the things that we were teaching in the classroom would now be relegated to online, that is asynchronous learning in terms of videos, games, and things like that. But campuses would be very nicely prioritized for peer learning, learning from friends, building camaraderie, bonding, games, sports, so on and so forth. I think we will be using discussions, okay. debates, and all these things for navigating through contrary opinions. And that's what education institutions should be used for. And some of the budget schools or some of those who have not been staying in education with passion will move out. Eventually, they will be compelled to move out and the best of them will, will stay. As far as faculty members are concerned, they have adapted themselves beautifully well and they become the champion of uh, uh, gathering all the students. They become more discoverable if they use their social media and then they play a role model. Uh, they continue to play the role model that they, they have been playing and therefore the best of the teachers will become better with these uh, new scenarios emerging. And I just sorry, sorry, I I sorry, sorry, I'm really sorry. I have to just in the interest of time. I want to take one final question, you know, uh, like that typical news uh, channel debate types, like one minute to all of you. Uh, I'll start with you, uh, Mr. O'Broy, you know. So tell me, as we go on, uh, one, the sentiment that is there in the non-metro markets, how can brands leverage it, you know? What, what is your advice to you know the marketing community how do you see it a quick one minute answer oh, uh, for them it's like uh, to reach out 
So it's if it's specifically for the marketing community, I would say that the themes are changing. Earlier we used to talk about prosperity, we used to talk about fulfilling dreams, etc. But the themes have changed to a more subdued emotions. Uh, security is an important one. We are coming back down in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So our themes are what we say, the message we say. It's more about security of future, and it is very important for you to reach out. Personal interactions will be limited, but the digital uh, is like now embedded into uh, the life fabric of every citizen of India almost. And uh, the important thing is, yes, stay connected. Right, uh, Mrs. Satish, your your quick uh, answer to this. My advice to anybody in marketing or sales is probably, as I said again, I'll repeat. One is the pre-purchase behavior has completely changed. The purchase, the process of purchase has changed, and then the post-purchase has completely changed. Now, as a marketer, you need to clearly study what is this behavior, the changes which is happening, whichever product, whatever categories we are in. How do we reach to these three changes which we have done, and then probably adapting to the new digital? And when I say digital, it's not about e-commerce alone. It's about the way the information. The, you will reach to consumer, and the medium which we will use it to the, reach that consumer. I think that will completely change. And I think, as a sales and a marketing person, uh, faster we adapt to this one. I think better would be for right. everybody. Mr. Rao, quickly, then I go to Ms. Sethi. Last, the last final word. I think this uh, new form situation has uh, dawned what is called minimalism. Minimalism uh, helps us identify the real needs from those loosely drawn Venn diagram kind of needs that we have been marketing on in the past. I think those products and services that can be taken inside the living room through access to customer, through retention of customer, and through uh, engagement of the customer, I think those products and services will survive. And for us, we will uh, forever learn to live a life that is frugal and more efficient. And marketers and businesses will also turn adaptively more efficient and uh, and more uh, faster and uh, and reach out to the customers accordingly. One one point before I close is that uh, once one person has asked the question, the new education policy will definitely have uh, see uh, 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 FDIs coming into education and more and more good foreign institutions are going to set up in India in the years to come. My answer is yes to that. Perfect. Uh, Ms. Siri, slightly tweaked question to you is that how can brands make most of this situation as you are seeing this sentiment? How can they leverage this? You know, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, um, uh, as far as, uh, you know, tier two, tier three, uh, tier four, um, all the various tiers of markets that we talked about, unmetro markets that we talked about, the non-metro markets that we talked about, uh, they, uh, there is a misconception uh, in terms of what percentage contribution they bring to the table in terms of various categories from the data that we understand uh, almost uh, 60 to 65 percent contribution across certain very large uh, categories uh, markets the faster they are uh, you know they are uh, merged into the fabric the larger marketing fabric so to speak i think the better it will be i think we as marketers need to understand that uh, second is that in terms of uh, uh, regional publications, uh, they continue to be uh, there. Uh, the numbers are out there, as uh, Satish was also mentioning. So those continue to uh, do well. It's a, uh, that is back. The amalgamation of reading uh, both offline and online between the physical and the digital avatars uh, is something that we are seeing uh, in the... Uh, uh, in the non-metro markets in a spectacular way. Uh, mm -hmm. As a company, we continue to, you know, do a lot of work in the product area uh, so that you're able to, uh, you know, continue to be to your franchise. I think that's important. And I am a great, uh, you know, personally, I'm a great uh, uh, proponent of the fact that uh, we need to continuously look at uh, which is the last question that I had to all of you, which is market prioritization. And how do we, if this is the situation, then what do we need to do in this situation? Uh, do we, con do we uh, take note of the fact that there is a paradigm shift and therefore change our thinking? Or uh, do we wait for, you know, uh, 
to wait. Yeah. <laughs> I think that yeah. is uh, that is a, uh, and I'm sure that we won't because I think we knew. So uh, that is uh, okay. these are interesting times, and uh, I think we are all responding uh, in very very interesting ways. Satish, I totally loved the way you described. Uh, <laughs> and that was very interesting, actually, and and the. Uh, Time bound. I mean, to do it, it's so fast. So much for planning that extra yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank uh, Ms. Sethi, Mr. Obroy, Mr. Satish, and Mr. Rao for this wonderful conversation. And our focus, along with our partner Denik Baskar, would remain on non-metros. We'll come up with a series of, as I said, webinars. And for today, thank you so much for joining us to all the viewers who watched us and all the questions that were posted. Thank you once again for your time. See you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.